Stacey Flood is with us in just a second. First, here's another Dorothy Wall reflecting on the Six Nations campaign. Look, I think some things went our way and others didn't. And we probably grew through that period. Like there was a huge hype around the first match and it, it went our way. The second match didn't and we finished with a win. So it was a bit of a roller coaster, but we finished on the right side of it. And look, we have a huge 18 months ahead of us. So this is a good time to look back and review at what we did well, what we didn't do well and how we can become better as a team. Stacey Flo, good morning to you. How are you? Morning. Hi. Uh, what kind of a what kind of a celebration is there at the end of a Six Nations like that where you're not really allowed to celebrate? But there was a bit of relaxation around the weekend. So were you all able to at least kind of gather and spend some time or was it straight back home and kind of no actual chance to hang out together? Um, obviously, after full time, we went back into the dressing room and said a few things to each other and obviously celebrated the win. But uh, just back to the hotel, had dinner and then dispersed off this time anyway. So not as <laughs> not as much crack as you might have anticipated after a, a big win at the end, because there was a bit of pressure in the build-up. Yeah, look, the day will come to have a, a bit of crack after, and hopefully uh, restrictions ease off soon enough for us to get that opportunity, but stay safe for now. <laughs> and what was the pressure like in the build-up to that game? Because so much was riding on it. Yeah, look, um, I think you have to block out while everyone on the outside is playing and just get your pers like your personal performance in and really focus on like what the group wants to achieve out of the game. So you kind of have to block out the outside media stuff and just focus on the game plan itself and just trying to get a performance in. So yeah, pressure's for tires. <laughs> when it came to your own performance uh, at the weekend, Stacey, how much of this was uh, a moment for you where you thought this is my arrival now, this is a, a huge opportunity for me, or had the build coming off the bench over the last couple of weeks, had that actually eased you into it to the point where there wasn't a whole pile of individual pressure on you? Yeah, look, being in the last few months with the girls, um, I feel like they, we've really, well, I've really learned a lot off them. And um, obviously it's kind of easier coming off the bench because there's less pressure on you as a player. So you can kind of come on and do your thing and then Getting the start in the last game, I, I I was trying not to feel the pressure um, and just focus on the performance, but it got to game day and I showed up and I think I'd forgotten my GPS vest, my presentation jacket, because I was so focused on just getting the like getting the game plan right and going on and doing well. So um, yeah, hope, they're only little things I forgot, but <laughs> game on, focused on the game plan. So um, yeah, look, we're happy with a win, but I actually think um, we didn't even show what we can really do, which is really exciting in a way because there's so much more to build on and there's so much more to show everyone what we can do. So, yeah, that's exciting. Can I just ask the, the difference between coming off the bench and starting? When you're coming off the bench, is it easier in a way because you get to suss out what the opposition are doing, who's going well, the sort of openings that you might be able to find in the defence, whereas when you're in there from the start, you've only got your a, a more one-dimensional view, I guess, because you're right up close to it. Yeah, so coming off the bench, I'd say, obviously, if the game's going well, it's easy on you as well because mm -hmm. um, you just have to come on and finish it off for the girls and be that little bit of an impact. And um, when it wasn't going well against the French, I was like, look, just come on and try to play some ball and see what we can do, see if we can test them. Like, as a sub, you don't want to come on and just blend in. You want to come on and make that impact and help the girls who have been on the field for 60, 70 minutes and just try to give them a bit of a lift with you. So, um, yeah, it's a bit of a difference. Um, but when we go in at halftime, if you're starting, uh, we kind of have a little hot review and kind of see what, the subs think and what the manager and coaches think like that we can do for the second half so you kind of get that even though you're so up close to it you kind of get that little review and what they think we need to do in the second half as well so all right so people, so those on the bench are actually feeding input into you at half time oh definitely like those girls are great for that and even when we were on the bench like it's the players like they know your game plan they know what we want to do so when we're coming in at half time and they're like I saw this and I'm like, oh, really? Like, I didn't actually see that because it you're so close and personal on the field. Mm. Um, so then they're like, oh, there's space here. So you're like, oh, that's brilliant. Like, I'll have a look for it now. And they just plant the seed in your head and you can have a go then. 
and does it work? Um, yeah, you'd like to think so. You'd hope so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, overall, like, is this uh, a Six Nations that you look back on massively positively? Like, I, I guess the the attention on the team ratcheted up as as things went on. The the France performance, I'm sure, was disappointing from your perspective. But as Ger alluded to there, there was a sense this Italian team was really coming and getting the win against them on Saturday. I'm sure you just come away from the whole thing feeling really positive about life. Yeah, like uh, as Dorothy just said, um, it was definitely a roller coaster. Um, there's so much of a build, a build into the games, which just led to so much for a drop off after. But I'd say two out of three is a positive campaign for us. And obviously we have plenty to work on for the season ahead, but we know what we need to do and what we need to work on, which is the best thing about game time. And yeah, I'd say it's a positive campaign and happy to build on that and see what can evolve in the next few months for us. Stacey, your, your own background is a GA background primarily. Is that where you would have come through kind of as, from an, an athletic perspective? Um, yeah, look, when I was younger, I would try try anything. Um, my mom actually wanted me to be a dancer, but I uh, soon realised I was not a dancer. Um, but my older sister, Kim uh, Flood, was playing uh, GAA, and I was like, oh my God, she's so good. I just really want to play. And <laughs> um, so I started playing GAA and then came up the ranks. Um, obviously, with Clannagale Fontenay as my club and um, got put on all the Dublin trials and stuff and made a few of the teams, played Dublin minor. And then when I turned 18, um, I had started dabbling in rugby at 17 uh, to keep fit for GAA actually, um, funny enough. But uh, when I turned 18, I was offered a sevens full-time contract. So I've been on that adventure ever since now, kind of take going wherever it takes me, yeah. So the sevens pathway is really important for the senior 15s team. It's a, it's a way to talent scout good quality athletes who will have some ball skills who might be able to transfer that into the senior team. And how long how long have you been with the sevens before you actually were uh, brought into the senior team? Um, I've been playing sevens full on for um, six, six years now. Um, I've been contracted since I'm 18. And then obviously we... Uh, COVID this year and um, we got the opportunity to because we weren't allowed to travel with sevens because it's obviously it's a hot weather sport so we don't really usually play it in Ireland um, so uh, I got to start with the 15s this year fully um, and get a lot of training in with the girls which was so beneficial even as a sevens player like the skills transfer over and um, you just have to learn that tactical element of the 15s game so we, I was I was glad, and I know the other sevens girls who got to transfer over, and um, were glad to get that opportunity. And just to make it one program, uh, I think is so beneficial for women's rugby, and the player pool just increases for that green jersey and competition, and you just get to drive each other on, try earn a uh, cap for your country, which is the best thing at the end of the day. And I don't know what what the future holds. Is it can you do a little bit of both, or do you become one? specifically or what happens next um look both are priority and that's what's great about rugby um and obviously the squads interlink uh so hopefully we get to rest refocus and then we're back into sevens which is exciting uh to see some of the girls i haven't seen during the six nations but just if something comes up for sevens or 15s and just the prior, like neither are priority. They're just um, just kind of build into that World Cup next year for both the sevens and fifteens World Cup next year, and they're at different times. So hopefully we'll get to be involved in both, which is the goal of having it as one program. Is there any idea when the next game is for the fifteens? Um, so we have a six week uh, rest now, and then we'll go back into camps in preparation for that World Cup qualifier. For the New Zealand World Cup next year and um, we're not actually fully sure when that date is but we know it's around the summertime yeah and this team has been pretty used to training for a long period of time without without games I, I guess it's back into that now for the next little while yeah definitely and look it's probably a blessing in disguise that we got all those camps together because you'd never have that opportunity and um, so it's like a silver lining really I know it's been a little bit out of people's control but how important would it be for the club game to get back up and running in this country to get match minutes rather than 
training constantly for a game that, as you say, we're not even sure when it's going to take place? Yeah, look, obviously, I think grassroots and club rugby are so important to build the game in Ireland. And I actually think um, the Six Nations being a standalone tournament this year has brought way more attention to it. And it'll pro hopefully get so many more young girls playing and get them into their grassroots rugby and into the club rugby system. And hopefully the clubs can get up back up and running soon. And we can get a bit of game time with them as well. So we'll see where that goes, depending on restrictions. Yeah, fingers crossed. Uh, I think it's a good point you make. The, the higher visibility for this brings with its huge opportunities and huge benefits for the clubs and for hopefully the provinces and for the sevens team. And, and it just, it, you know, if it's all managed properly, then it's all heading in one direction. There's obviously going to be criticism and difficulties along the way, but that's, that's what comes with increased uh, attention, increased um, people talking about it. That's just Irish life, right? Yeah, look, um, obviously everyone wants the women's game to grow and get better. So I think that's just a focus and hopefully it starts to get better and grow and the systems will get running when the restrictions are lifted and everyone will start playing more rugby, especially um, if it's like your friends are watching and you, you want to have a go with them. And it's really important for younger girls. Like obviously I started, I think I was six, 16, 17 when I started playing rugby and I, I think I just got in at the right age. Um, but you can see the likes of Bavin, like Dorothy, Amy Lee Murphy Crow, Eve Higgins, like they all started playing young and it's just so natural to them the way GAA would be natural to me. So I think the younger you get in, the better. And obviously the club systems coming up and AIL getting started will be massively um, a boost for the squad and for the country as well. Well, listen, Stacey, congratulations on the start and on the win at the weekend. Thanks a million for joining us this morning. Cheers. Thanks for having me.